Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. How you doing this good Monday morning? Yeah. And this is all is well. All right. This is Mark. Doing all right, fellas? Pretty good. Oh, yeah. All, all is well all on this end. Doing good. All right. All right. So this is Mark Calhoun coming from Care, South Carolina. Uh, we've partnered today with uh, the fellows over at Man to Man uh, Fatherhood Initiative to provide a general men's health um, lecture today. Um, I'm going to let go down and let the fellows introduce themselves and where they're from, their title, and um, go from there. How about it? All right. I guess I started go out. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, bro. You can go ahead. No problem. Daniel Blathers, Intervention Specialist, Man to Man Florence. All right. Anthony Green, uh, Man to Man Fatherhood, uh, Darlington. All right. Um, I'm Daniel Myers. I'm the MAT HUD Program Director for Care South, and I'm a nurse by trade. So it's good to be here on this fine Monday afternoon. Yes. That's right. That's <laughs> right. And again, my name is Mark Calhoun. I'm the director of social and community services for Care South Carolina. So we just gonna jump right on into it, right? Oh yeah. That's right. Definitely. All right. Here we go. All right. So uh brothers, I guess I guess I started out, you know, because we're talking about men's health, which is a, a little a little known, a little little uh uh, conversation that we have around the men's circle. We don't talk about our health as much as we talk about the health of our cars, the health of our motorcycles, the health of our clothes, and the health of everything else. Our overall general men's health is something that we talk the least about. So um, we need to do something. A little, we need to do something a little bit different to have more conversations around this area, so we can have healthy men to be healthy fathers to create a healthy community. And so I think I appreciate the brothers from Man to Man and uh, Fatherhood Initiative uh, inviting us to help do this training along with them. Um, and so I just want to know if they got anything they want to say before we get started about this program, about what we're doing today. Well, from a partnership standpoint, um, men's health is part of our curriculum here at Man to Man. So we do focus on health issues as dealing with fathers here in our program and in the community. So for us, this is a healthy partnership to be able to provide men and fathers with information that they need in order to improve their health situation. That's pretty good. Yeah. Brother Anthony, you got anything you want to say? Absolutely. And uh, absolutely. Yes, uh, Brother Myers, um, we, we also uh, use this particular uh, component to really get, engage our participants to better, better really look, look at the ways of their health and, and kind of track their health. Because we also have um, at the end of this particular uh, men's health component, our health screening that we have all of our uh, participants to try to uh, take part in. And so we track that information to let them know of um, you know, a starting point where the health is at that point and where the health is moving forward. And as of right now, from, from the last actual health screening, we've, we've had participants who have actually showed uh, better numbers in their health and, and better acknowledgement to their health. So the, uh, the the component and the health screens are working and we've gotten people to really focus on better health for themselves. So yeah, this is great and glad to be a part of this with you guys today. Wow. Well, the pledge is all ours. You know, we're always glad to, to be a help to um, our partners and um, stakeholders in the community. So this is this is very important to us as well, Care South, because we believe that a healthy community is a happy community. So we really want to make sure that we get all this information out. Um, I don't like to say lecture around people because you say lecture, they go ahead and go to the next video. So we want to talk. We want to have a health discussion um, about men's health and uh, bring out some good points that we believe can make us a a healthy uh, uh, community and a healthy uh, group of men, you know, within our community. So let, let's start with the objectives that we have. We want to increase the awareness of the special health risks that face our, our males, right? We also want to discuss symptoms and risk factors 
for top diseases among men. Discuss mental health, right? Because without without good mental health, there can be no good physical health. Okay, uh, especially around depression um, with men. Um, explore the attitudes about health, uh, health facilities, communication with healthcare providers, and taking preventive measures to avoid diseases. Also, enhance the ability to communicate comfortably and effectively about your health. That's with anybody, especially with your uh, primary care provider or you know some of your friends. Um, explore behaviors and lifestyle choices for men to stay healthy. Um, and also explore the fatherhood connection concerning health and paternity issues. So that, that's a lot, you know, that's a, that's, that's a lot of stuff and a lot of important stuff that we're going to discuss today, but we're going to do the best we can. We don't want to bore you with the information. So we're going to make it as exciting as possible. Okay. So um, brother Calhoun, we can go to the next slide. Okay. Hazards okay. of being a man. Mm. Hazards of being a man. First of all, hazards of being a man is just, just what it says, being a man, right? Because we know that men yeah. are risk takers, right? Mm. And so uh, the death rate uh, for cancer and cirrhosis of the liver is two times higher than men than women. A uh, death rate for heart disease is two times higher for men than women. Men with ulcers are two times higher than women. And death rate within a few years of divorce or breakup of similar relationships is three times higher among men than women. So men are all men are, are two times to three times higher to develop anything over women because men internalize everything. We don't share, we don't talk. So let's move to the next slide. Has there been a man three times more likely to be a murder victims than women? Successful suicides three times higher among men than women. A man times a six, listen, six times likely to have an own an uh, on-the-job accident than with women, and 13 times more likely to be arrested for drunkenness than women. Let's talk about that just for a minute. Three times higher, to, three times more likely to be a murder victim. Men have an ego. Our egos get in the way, right? Men have access mm -hmm. to guns. Men have temper issues, right? There's a such thing as machismo, which causes us not to want to back down in confrontations, and so that can lead to us having a confrontation with somebody, and things happen. And we see it on the news all the time. Right. We're losing our men, we're losing especially our black males to uh, uh, murder, you know. And so we have to be we need to be more mindful about our uh, attitudes, about our language and about our behaviors, of, you know, in the public. Uh, but one way we can deal with that is through mental health, getting people to, uh, to talk about their issues and for men to release some of that pressure that's bottled up inside of us. So whenever they get into confrontation, uh, they're less likely to erupt into something more serious. Um Men are also more likely to have successful suicide. Wait a minute, back up just one minute, Marie. The suicide of men because the women because men have access to guns, right? And then when it comes to the job, first of all, men take chances more. They're more they're, they're, they're higher risk takers, and so we don't always follow the rules at work. And then when it comes to drunk, I haven't met a drunk man yet, right? Regardless of how drunk he is, I haven't met a drunk man yet because you ask your brother, you drunk? Nah, I'm good. And so men. Have a, don't, they have a problem with admitting that they can't handle alcohol, right? Which, once again, that's our behavior. That's machi our machismo, which makes us feel like we are better than the next guy. You know, if you can drink five bottles of liquor, I can drink 10, and I still can drive home, okay? So mm. that's why that's why this happened. We mm. are risk takers, and we have attitude issues where we feel like, you know, I, I, I can't be beat by anything, and you're going to lose against the law enforcement every time, especially mm. when you're inebriated. So let's go to the next slide. Um, men have two times more fatal accidents per mile than women. Why? Because men don't follow the speed limit. That's just to us. That fifty-five is just a suggestion, right? That's a suggestion mm -hmm. to us. But we know with law enforcement, the speed limit is absolute. So if it says fifty-five, you're supposed to go fifty-five. There's a there's a now there's a a a, 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 a you know a, a myth that's going around that you can go five miles per hour above the speed limit and you're good. OK, that's just what it is. It's a myth. A folklore. Uh, me and my Rick, yeah. Me and my Rick, we both come from law enforcement and 55. Any, any any speed limit that you see is absolute. Right. They might allow you to go five miles above, above the speed limit, depending on the road, you know, the, the flow of traffic. But the, the speed limit is absolute. And men always use that for a suggestion. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's got it, I got an 84 Grand Prix. Right, Pontiac Grand Prix with a 383 stroke in it, mm. with a 350 turbo transmission, a big, uh, big boy cam in it, and so oh what I want to do, I want to get on the highway and see it roll, right? 
if the number, I want to pay that needle out just so I can show people what my car do. And that we, we once again, we're risk takers. And so that's what causes us to get in more fatal accidents because we don't follow the rules. We won't wear seat belts. We won't follow the speed limit. And we're going to try to do whatever the car can do uh, as far as the pedal. If we can make that pedal wrap around again like a bicycle pedal and keep going faster, we'll do that. OK, just see how fast it go. OK. <laughs> And the reason why women live five times more, long, uh, five more years longer than men is because women believe in taking care of themselves. Women go to the doctor. They talk about their issues. They don't internalize anything and they get themselves checked on a regular basis. OK, men wants to get a five time like to, to acquire HIV than women because, hey, I can't feel it. Right. Once again, we're, 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 we're risk takers and we don't like following the rules. OK, we don't want to cover up. We don't want to use protection because I can't feel anything. And, you know, I, they, this don't feel right to me. But. How does it feel when you have to go and get treatment for the rest of your life because of H contracting HIV? OK, so we are risk takers. And, and, and mm. been in that aspect, we also cause the people that we love to have to deal with the same issue because we don't follow the rules. OK, next slide. So good question. Why do you think men living in the South seem to have a higher rate of disease and earlier death than other men? I mean, that's easy. We live in the Bible, but we live in the South where all our foods are cooked in fat, right? All our drinks mm -hmm. are drowned in sugar, right? Even our fat is cooked in fat, right? We take bacon and deep fry bacon. <laughs> Don't we deep fry bacon, right? We, we, deal with, we, we deal with a lot of meat that's, that has nitrates in it, which is preservatives, which leads to uh, high sodium levels, which lead to high blood pressure and heart disease and diabetes. And so that's why men die early. And then the, the key part of that is, is that they don't keep track of their health. They don't go see a provider. They don't go see a uh, get they you know get their numbers checked, anything like that. They just go along with it, right? Until they start feeling too bad and they ain't got no choice. And then by the time you get there, you're already diagnosed with something where you could have prevented it through preventative health, health measures. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Mm -hmm. Cultural factors, right? What we eat, we just talked about that. More fat and fried foods. OK. And, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in our culture, we believe that the thicker somebody is, the more healthy they are. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So and, and, and that's what we look at. We have a different concept of um, obesity, not knowing that, you know, obesity is one of the leading causes to uh, uh, one of uh, all your uh, diagnoses. Right. But we learn to we learn to accept that and go along with it. And at the same time, you can't look at a person and judge whether or not they're healthy according to their size. You can't look at that. So we should never judge a person based on how they're built and how they look. But they should judge themselves based on their numbers and how they how they uh, factor up, factor in to uh, medical treatment and medical and um, uh, preventive medicine to make sure that you're getting past all these diseases. Also, the lack of trust leads to the delay in healthcare because I'm gonna speak for us as as our culture as as, uh, and, 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 uh, ethnicity as black men. We don't trust somebody. We don't trust a whole lot of medical people based on our history from way back. Right. So we'd rather go and ask the barber man, uh, the barbershop guy, uh, give give him our symptoms and let him diagnose us. or talk to another brother to see if he's going through the same thing. And then we do self-diagnosis right in the barbershop. We take care of mental health. We take care of physical health and everything. We get in a group of men. We discuss that. Hey, man, did you, what, for example, I'm like, hey, brother, you have been walking around. Your toe just fell off. Right. Yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> Then the next question, what did you do? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, what, what, hey, what, yeah, what'd you do with that? Mm. Hey, man, I just got some duct tape and put it back on, man. You know how we do. So the back up with some fishing line. Okay, <laughs> then we go home with the same thing, right? Bad information. We take bad information. And what we should leave, the, we should leave the diagnosis to the professionals, okay? Medical professionals, they, that's what they get paid for. Go ahead, brother. Well, here, I, I just wanted to, to kind of put this in to see how, how everybody's thinking. You know, as men, you know, growing up, you know, when we're little boys, we always taught to be tough. You know, mm -hmm. you might be hurting a little bit, man, you'll be all right, you a boy, tough it out. And from that mentality till we're an adult, we kind of carry that. And no one's ever saying, hey, you know, like I said, with our little girls, you taking them to the doctor each and every time. But for us, you know, unless something is actually broken or you bleeding, we're not going anywhere. And that's just how we're taught, you know, as men growing up. And it kind of carries over into adulthood, which we think we should know better. But if you had a thought process for 15, 20 years, 
it's not going to change too much. <laughs> no, no, it's not. And, you know, and, and just to piggyback on what you said, whenever I was growing up, my closest, um, my first encounter with a dentist was not in a dentist's office. OK, my first encounter with a dentist, my first dentist was a doorknob. Right. And, a, and a string. <laughs> yeah. My second dentist was a pair of channel locks. OK. And mm. some alcohol. But my mm. daddy said, well, that tooth loose. Let me get let me get the channel locks and snatch mm. it out. OK. That was my that was my second encounter. But then mm. he realized, you know, I could be causing more harm to my son than, than good. So let me do this thing the right way. So that's when we started going to the dentist more regularly and started going to the doctor. And, and that's why that's what got me into the health field that I'm in now, because it's something that we can we can get past. And when I say ignorance, I don't mean that people are stupid, but ignorance is something that you don't know or you don't understand. OK, so understand that having these professionals available to us would increase our life expectancy and increase our overall health, which give us a better quality of life. OK. And so we also have issues with money, mm -hmm. less education. OK. And inadequate medical insurance. You know, I, I feel like all this stuff run hand in hand because it has everything to do with our income factor and our uh, choice of, uh, of livelihood. You know, coming from the South back in the day, the most prominent lifestyle, the most prominent occupation was farm work. There was no insurance mm -hmm. in farm work, right? There was very little money in farm work, and you didn't have to have a college degree to work in that. So it means just mm -hmm. that in itself put strain on our bodies, okay? The long hours, the hard work, the intensive labor, um, that put strain on us and, and caused us to develop diseases because we had we couldn't eat on a regular basis. We had to eat whatever we was given, okay? And, and and then when you move down a little bit to the next bullet, it says possible unhygienic and dangerous and stressful living arrangements. Um, I remember growing up with, with my brothers used to leave on um, like a, a week or so, a week or so after school got out and they would go down to Lawrence or Conway and live in a boarding house and work in tobacco fields. OK, they had running water, but they didn't have mm -hmm. any, you know, none of the stuff was really safe down there. But they had to make do because that's the way that's the way that they made their living to provide for themselves in this next school year. And so. But I think I think a lot about the people when I look around now, there's a lot of people that don't have running water now still. Even today, even in 2021, people still don't have running water. They, they, they still don't have money to pay you know, electrical bills. Um, they don't have the best clothes. They don't have the washing machine, the dryer, and then to keep clean. So that can lead to diseases as well. OK, being in that situation can lead to diseases. And then since I'm stressed out already, living in a stressful, uh, a stressful environment, then I start smoking. And that's what it says in the next bullet. Mm -hmm. In 2018, 80% of psychological adults smoke, okay? 16.1% nationally. I believe if you look at the numbers since COVID, those numbers probably increased mm -hmm. because people got bored. And, you know, yeah. as human beings, when we get bored with our cephalic, um, um, uh, the, the, the cephalic part of our brain take over, and we have to pacify ourselves with something in our mouth. And so usually we pick up smoking or drinking or something to occupy our time. Brothers, you got anything you want to say on that? Well, I mean, just like with, like you're saying, with not having anything to do, and you, you start resorting to other things, it it is it, it builds up, and just like you were saying earlier about we live in the South, and things are not as fast paced as bigger cities because they walk more because so many you know things are close by, versus here in the South things are spread out, and you know. You know, years ago, our, our grandparents and stuff that didn't have transportation, they were healthier because they walked everywhere. Well, mm -hmm. now we just hop in the car, run to the store, come back, get back on the couch, and it's fine. So exercise and walking has to be intentional. And a lot of times we're not pushed to that, you know, from, you know, like I say, again, growing up, it's not something that's in our culture pushed every day. Right. You know, right. and for most men, you would think they would be okay because a lot of kids, you know, our boys, we play sports, but sometimes that's just not enough. And then if you're not playing the right sport that keeps you active or you're not playing all year round, well, you're only healthy for four months out of the year. And then the other eight months, you're waiting on the season to come back. That's, it. that's right. You know, and I agree with you because I found out something. I, I had to check myself on something. I want to go to my front yard, so I came up my back door. And I was like, dog, I got to go to the front yard. Instead of me taking the time to walk to the front front of the house, I went back in and got the key to the lawnmower that was sitting at the back door and drove the lawnmower to the front to go check the mail. <laughs> mm. Man, come on, man. Somebody talk to me. Somebody help me. Right? I live yeah. less than... 
I'm I'm gonna assess that one if I may take a stab at it. You must have a very nice, nice lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> it was good Saturday, bro, when I bust the cylinders on it. Right on so it was. But I but taking you know, the, the list to drive fast across the yard, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Risk factor. <laughs> that sounds like something I would do. Yeah, it didn't read the instructions, right? Didn't read the instructions. Just drove. Right? All you, all you know is it go fast, right? Wide open, brother. Wide open. Right? That's it. <laughs> How about beefing it up a little bit? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I mean that's 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 the kind of that's the kind of mentality that we got. You know, we do we do the least. I put it this way. The, the, the nature of human beings is to take the path of least resistance, right? And so we understand that walking would increase, would, it's, of course, it's going to make us tired. It's going to increase our oxygen flow. It's going to increase our blood flow. But at the same time, it's going to make us tired and make our feet hurt. So we'd rather just jump in a car. I'm talking about myself now, okay? I ain't talking about nobody else out there listening or nothing like that. But take a car <laughs> two blocks to the grocery, to, two blocks to the convenience store, right? To get a diet soap and come at home. How much sense does that make? Mm. I'm two blocks away, which I mean, I can look at the store from my front door, but I get in the car and I drive that. It takes me longer to drive probably than to walk because I got red lights. But we, we take the path of least resistance because health is not on the forefront of our brain, right? It's convenience. And that's what gets us in a lot of trouble, being convenient. Um, my right, you go to the next slide. Okay, so and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about heart disease, cancer, COVID-19, okay, strokes, unintentional injuries, um, chronic lower respiratory disease, okay, and Alzheimer's and diabetes. Okay, all these are issues that we face. Now, if we look at the COVID-19, let's just pull COVID-19 out of there right quick. Look how our life has drastically changed since COVID-19, right? So many things change. who we can be around, where we can go, what we can wear. Right. What activities we can we can have. Right. Because of a respiratory disease. Right. A, a, a virus that has been here for many, many years has now um, changed and manifested in something to cause a pandemic, which means it's taking lives. And if you look at the geography of your neighborhoods and your community and in, within your family, it's changed drastically. People that was here two years ago was taken away by this by this disease. Right. And so now mm -hmm. it behooves us to make sure that we still follow CDC guidelines where it says if you've been vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask anywhere. But I, I encourage everybody to wear a mask because it's not for just for your protection, but also for the protection of the people that you're around. OK, and especially those people with all these issues that's going on right here. Every single one of these issues are risk factors for those contracting this disease. Put them at a higher risk than anybody else. OK, and our community. One thing to that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, just like you were saying, we, we worry a lot about COVID now is, you know, don't put everything else on the back burner because right. we are worried about COVID. Like you say, don't, you know, yeah, you may not want to go outside a lot, but then you can find a safe place to still go walking. That's right. You know, um, so that, that's why, you know, I just wanted to add that in because a lot of times when we get something major, we forget about the minor stuff. Exactly. You know, you know, food, food might get short in the grocery store every now and then. You have to get what you can, but now that when it gets back to normal, you go back to buying healthier food. Yeah. And brother, you know, um, I got a neighbor who said, since he had all this time on his hand, he made him a bucket garden. He went and got pallets from the dumpster, you know, made him a little platform. He got five gallon buckets and he made a garden inside those buckets, you know, so he can have healthy food and have to worry about mm -hmm. going out to, in the public to the store. He said, I know mm -hmm. by the time that this grows and I might, you know, we might be able to go out. He said, but it's still a good, a good opportunity to eat healthy and grow my own food. So I know what I'm putting in my body. OK, and we, we know for a fact. That's right. And we know that through through a scientific, uh, uh, through scientific and medical uh, um, uh, tests that eating healthy foods, eating naturally grown foods in your from your garden. Uh, would decrease your likelihood of developing heart disease, um, uh, cancer, certain cancers. Um, you got to worry about homicides because you're home out of your business, right? The only thing's going to kill you right there if you leave, leave, a, leave a rake out there and you step on it, brush in the forehead, right? But other stuff, right? Other stuff that we usually get uh, uh, you know, uh, around or exposed to, 
we don't have to worry about that. Now we pick up healthy, uh, healthy attitude and healthy habits. It changes all the risk factors for this, all these diseases that we see on this page. Okay, which are the top causes of death in males. Okay, and we know for a fact that if we don't eat right, if we don't continue educating ourselves and working our brain the way we do our muscles, that we probably will develop Alzheimer's disease later. Right, but the more we use our brain, and the more we th uh, open our thought processes, it stretches our brains as well, and it can decrease our likelihood of developing Alzheimer's disease. And like you said, the more we exercise, it decreases our likelihood of developing diabetes, having a stroke, um, heart disease, heart attack, congestive heart failure. Okay, we got to make sure that we stay healthy and see somebody and keep track of our numbers. All right, and stop smoking. We're gonna get that later, but smoking is one of the big smoking is the leading risk factor to all of these diseases. So we got to stop. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so I always ask this question every time we just do it. I think we've been doing this about four years now. And I think yeah. every time I see that picture, um, Robert, go, go to that picture just for a minute. Every time I see this picture, <laughs> it's always about lunchtime. Okay? Every time. And so if I went to a, a, a buffet, <laughs> If I went to a buffet and I'm paying my $12.99, now I'm more apt to get that fried chicken, rice and gravy and corn mm. with some sweet tea and some peach cobbler mm -hmm. to chase it down with. Mm. Okay? Yes, I'm not looking at say this it, stuff over it. here because we don't even look at him. <laughs> huh? No, nah, right? we, I mean, we, we in the moment with you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I know that the plate with the... Um, the, the portion size um, protein, the portion size carbohydrates, and then the, the, the fresh vegetables, I know that that's healthy for me. But sometimes we put happiness over health. And if we, we don't understand that we put health and happiness together, we can have a greater quality of life. So the plate with the vegetables is the best idea because for one thing, it has a variety of colors and textures, which is good for our digestive system, also good for uh, our hearts. So we need to take advantage of this plate over here. Okay, but brother Myers, I I give you a, a funny thing that just happened to me this weekend. Um, I go my mom's home for the you know visit for vacation, and I go by my aunt house and she's cooked fried chicken and pan pan stovetop cornbread and all those good things, and she's like, you know, baby, you want a plate? And you know, I just ate bad the day before. Now here it is, two days in a row afterwards. I had to tell her no because I'm trying to go get this salad, but the pressure was on because it, it like that plate you're looking at on the left. It was yeah. all that <laughs> yes. with, with some pan, with some stove top cornbread, and you don't get stove top cornbread too often. <laughs> I know. And see, and see, brother, I got a problem with salads. Um, the only way I want my salad is like on a sandwich. Mm -hmm. Right. I want my lettuce and tomatoes on top of some beef between two pieces of bread. That's how I want my salad with some mayonnaise and salad dressing. I you just can't do a salad. A whole wheat <laughs> uh, grilled chicken sandwich. <laughs> no, no. I, I eat healthy in other ways. But I just can't. Some things I can't do. I can't do a salad because by the time I put everything on there, it's probably the most unhealthy dinner I ate all day. OK. By the time I put ranch, Thousand Island, all the cheese, the croutons, the bacon bits, the uh, eggs, the ham pieces, and everything, salt and pepper and vinegar, whatever I put on there, it's the most unhealthy meal I had all day. So I said, if I'm going to go out like that, uh, and that's it. <laughs> that's it. So um, I just I just try to do things in moderation, okay? Um, make sure I don't eat too much of certain things. I only eat rice maybe once a week, which is my which is a big deal for me. OK, because we know it's a high, uh, high glycemic index, so it increases your blood sugar. Um, and so I try to stay away from that and try to keep myself as healthy as I can under the circumstances. And, you know, being in the South, this is this is kind of how we all grew up. And, you know, culturally, it's part of finding foods that can feed the masses easily. That's it. Um, That's it. So a lot of times, you know, if there's a household and there's three or four, maybe five kids or families coming over, you know, going to try to buy 10 steaks will hit you about $100 versus I can buy this bag of chicken for 
ten and a bag of rice and a bag of corn, mm -hmm. and I could feed ten people for twenty five dollars versus a hundred. That's right. That's right. That's what That's we're going to shoot for. So, and then two, it's the easy meal. You know, it is the easy meal. Is going, you know, restaurants. We got a lot of soul food restaurants. So, a lot of people weigh the option of eating healthy costs more. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they're not willing to pay for that, you know, versus, you know, hey, like I say, I went to two aunt's house this past weekend and all of them had the exact same thing. And, you know, you almost be able to leave with the same meal from two different households. Yeah. You know, trying to go get a salad. Yep. The, pressure, the type of pressure that is. It's a lot of pressure, man. That's that almost called anxiety and stress. <laughs> right? You see what it <laughs> But you know, um I I, I you know to, to, to my credit, I don't like eating out. I don't like fast foods. I'd rather cook a meal at home. That way I, I'm saving money for one thing, and I also got leftovers and I know what's going into preparation for my meal. And so I prefer to eat at home. My wife don't like that all the time because that puts somebody cooking and some dishes being dirty. But I told her I'm going to keep working on disposable pots. I'm going to work on disposable pots, man. If I can get disposable pots down, brother, I'd be rich because I don't yeah. like washing dishes. But, um, but I do prefer eating at home around that environment. My food digests better. I'm less likely to, to get in a confrontation with somebody because you know, just being home makes you safe. Not saying everybody got to stay home. But that's just my choice, okay? Um, we know that on the, on the next slide, when it talks about, uh, go ahead, Marek, I'm sorry. It talks about smoking. Back up, what, what was, I'm sorry, what, what was that smoking at? Was that before? Mm. Smoking. Which is uh, which is uh, a pet peeve of mine because I used to be a smoker, and I didn't realize how bad I felt until I stopped smoking and finally got fresh air in my lungs. Now I didn't smoke for a long time, but even smoking for a little while, you know, just for a small amount of time, uh, causes injury to your lungs and cause it, it could be reversed at that time, but it can cause some lung damage. But I didn't understand how it, how it felt to take a deep breath until after I stopped smoking. Also, uh, smoking also damages your teeth. Is one of the leading causes of cancer and heart diseases. Um, and listen, without good oral health, you can't have good medical health because if you can't get the proper foods down your throat, then you can't get the proper nutrients into your body. So your good, your oral health is very, very important to you. And um, also your mental health, which means being being conscious about what you're doing around you, like speeding. I ride a motorcycle, right? And most of the, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie and say I have my helmet on all the time. But if I'm going outside of the, my, my city limits, then I put my helmet on. If I'm just going down the street to the store, I don't put my helmet on. But I still know that that's not safe. Most accidents happen at least 10 miles away from your house, up to 10 miles away from your house. So um, I need to start being a little more vigilant about that. Um, I don't have to worry about the gangs no more because they don't want no OGs in there. Um, I'm a preacher, so I'm always around the wrong crowd. OK, um, <laughs> Um, not doing safety measures when working, you know, that could be an issue and not practicing safe sex is always an issue uh, with, with younger guys and some older guys, because we do realize there's a high percentage of older men, um, baby boomers that have contracted um, hep C and HIV uh, because of their habits early on. So we have to understand that we have to be vigilant about that as well. But guys, just be more vigilant and ladies be more vigilant about your safety consciousness. Just be aware of what's going on around you and pay attention to the signs and everything that's out there. And, and if you can get into a smoking cessation program, and we offer one here at Care South that will help you get rid of that smoking issue that you have. And we understand that sometimes it comes because that's your stress reliever. But at the same time, it's, it might be relieving your stress mentally, but it's increase, increasing stress in your circulatory system, in your cardiovascular system. So let's be more mindful about that. And let's get into some programs to reduce our likelihood to smoke. Okay, am I right? That's us right there, all day, right? Back up one more time, one more slide, Marek. I'm sorry, the uncontrolled stress, because this is this is a big problem for men. Um, uncontrolled anger and stress, because we internalize stuff, right? Um, and because mm -hmm. we internalize stuff, we isolate ourselves from people, 
And then people want to, don't want to be around us because of that, that first two things, because we're angry all the time and we're stressed. If you look at the news, we always identified, our coaches always, always identified as the angry black man or the angry black woman. It's because we internalize stuff and we don't speak on it and we don't seek, men, we don't seek uh, behavior health when it's necessary, okay? Um, sometimes we feel not productive or lack of purpose because of our issues with, you know, because of our joblessness, abuse of uh, disability and early retirement. So we, we have to really, let, let's work until we can't work no more. Let's get into the workforce. Let's work. That, that increases your overall uh, sense of purposeness, right? If you can work, work. I see a lot of young guys that's younger than me in their 20s trying to get disability, right? And you, you, you But you can go out, you can party all weekend, you know, you can do a whole bunch of things. But when it comes to carrying on a job, you can't carry on a job. Not understanding that if you don't put anything into the system, you're not going to get anything out of the system later. You know, and I talk to the guys in the neighborhood all the time that, you know, um, because they, they, you know, they, they, for, I know the guys in the neighborhood. So I know some of them are, are um, street pharmacists, right? Illegally, right? With, without a prescription pad. Um, they don't have, they're not putting anything into the system and they're talking about retiring. I've never seen a retired drug dealer, right? I've never seen a drug dealer on disability, all right? I've never seen a drug dealer that, that you know, um, the only retirement plan that you got is either death or jail. So, you need to get out and work. It'll make you feel better about yourself. It's going to increase the value of your community and your family. Okay. Next slide, Marie. Heart attack warning signs, different than men and women. Okay. Um, they did a study that said that they, they're going to have to increase, um, increase the studies on women uh, and their signs of heart disease because it's so different from men. Women are not small men okay women anatomy is totally different from ours but when you talk about men they usually you usually find them in this category of signs whenever they're having a heart attack okay a feeling of chest pain that may spread to the arm neck uh the teeth the jaw or the back a tightness of burning or squeezing somebody would say it feel like somebody's like an elephant to stand on your chest okay a fullness of heaviness in chest that lasts more than a few minutes or goes away and comes back okay so if this thing is persistent then you need to go anytime you have an issue with this part, with, with the upper part of your body, around your chest, around your heart, it's always better safe than sorry. Go and get it checked, okay? Uh, you may feel faint, uh, lightheaded, short of breath, and that's due to a lack of oxygen being flowing through your system, okay? Getting to your brain, getting to your uh, organs, um, because your heart is now becoming uh, 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 not a good pump, okay? An insufficient pump. So it's not doing what it's supposed to do to make sure everything is getting what it needs. Um, your pulse rate of change, uh, which is going to cause your, your your face to become pale. Uh, even somebody said, "Well, I'm dark skinned. How can I how can I be pale?" Trust me, you can see a brother that look pale because of how dark he is. Okay, it changes your whole demeanor, changes your whole character and, and your whole um, appearance. Uh, your skin become clammy and you start sweating and you're throwing up for no reason. Not because you ate nothing bad, but it's just coming up. Okay, um, and with women, you feel more tired with shortness of breath. It may feel a crushing pain in your chest like men, but sometimes you don't feel any of that as a woman. So whenever you start feeling something that's just not right, your body your body has a way of letting you know that something ain't right. Whenever you start feeling that sense of anxiousness and you can't explain it, go and get yourself checked. Anxiety is one key to let us know that something ain't right with our bodies. Okay, next. So what is your normal blood pressure? Okay, these, these numbers change all the time, y'all. So I, I hate to put these numbers out there and you feel like you're not normal because sometimes it depends on you and your makeup, okay? But according to science, according to um, uh, Medical Journal, it says that a normal health with a, with a systolic of 120, that's your top number, and a diastolic, which is the bottom number, is 80, okay? Uh, these may these may be different depending on you, okay? But your provider will be able to let you know more about your, your makeup, what your good, good numbers are for you, okay? Uh, so go and get yourself checked. So when should I be worried about it? When the top number is 120 to 129 and the bottom number is uh, less than 80 or high blood pressure, um, when all these numbers are increased. So if your numbers are not within these limits, then go and get yourself checked. I tell people between um, 129 to one, 129 to 90 um, is, a, is, is a sign that your blood pressure might not be doing what it's supposed to do. So go and get yourself checked. It could be uh, you can have a situational hypertension, which means something happened to make me have high, you know, high blood pressure right here for this moment. It might not be um, uh, chronic hypertension, but you need to go and get a check to make sure. Next slide. A 
Okay. Weight reduction, dash diets, um, sodium reduction, physical activity, non-smoking, and moderation of alcohol consumption. Alcohol is made of sugar. If anybody y'all country bootleggers, which I mean, I'm pretty sure that most people out there probably didn't try to make some wine. You understand that whenever you make wine, that you got to put a whole bunch of sugar in there with the yeast, okay? And this is what I'm told. I ain't did this, okay? Uh, <laughs> put a whole bunch of sugar in there, and it's the, 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 <laughs> okay. The yeast feed on the sugar, and so you try to figure out, well, all that sugar I put in there, what happened to it? Okay. Remember, even though you don't taste the sugar, don't mean it is not there. So alcohol is full of sugar. All right. Um, stop smoking. Like I said, that's the leading cause of all of this. Okay. Be more active. Get out and work. Even if during COVID time, you still can walk around your own property. You still can go to a park and walk around the track. Stay active. Move more. Don't don't put. I never shake salt. Once my food is cooked, I don't go get the salt shake and add no more salt. So reduce your salt intake, your sodium intake. Okay. And think, I don't want you to think that salt, sodium is just about table salt because you find sodium in everything that you eat, in your sodas, in your chips. And everything that you eat, you find sodium. So watch your sodium intake. Um, people say dash diet. That's when you increase the calcium rich foods, such as dairy and green leafy vegetables, and you decrease your fats, okay? And you increase your fruits and vegetables. So that's probably something that, that's, that don't sound very appealing to us at all, okay? But a dash diet does show that way you can lose weight and you can become a healthier size with this dash diet. Is it hard? Anytime you put diet behind anything, it's always hard, okay? And it takes mental stability. <laughs> it takes mental toughness to go through it. With. It takes consistency, okay? Which is some factors that we really miss out on in our culture. It's consistency and dedication to something, okay? We always take the path of least resistance. Next slide. Cancer. One of the signs to pay attention to. Changing your bowel habits or bladder habits, okay? A sore that doesn't heal. Um, unusual bleeding or discharge. Thickening a lump in the breast, and that's for men too, testicles or elsewhere, okay? Indigestion or difficulty swallowing, obvious change in size, color, shape, or thickness uh, of a wart or, or a mouth sore, okay? A nagging cough or hoarseness. Um, if, any, if any of these things are a problem, see your health care provider immediately and just get checked. It could be nothing, but then again, it could be something, okay? And it's a broad list of signs and symptoms of cancer because there are many types of cancers. So don't just get caught up on this list, but do some research and find out what some leading causes of cancers are or some and some, some signs. You know, some other signs besides these because this is only a general list. So it can be very, very many more. But if you find any of these things present in your day-to-day -day living, go and get yourself checked. Better safe than sorry. Okay, next slide. COVID-19. Get vaccinated. Okay, protect your family, protect yourself. Okay. The good thing. Me and my rec got me and my rec got uh, vaccinated. Um, I took the Moderna vaccine. I took excuse me, I took the uh, Pfizer vaccine back in February. Um, and I think I'm not spilling the beans on my rec, but I think my rec took the Johnson and Johnson vaccine um, a, a couple of months ago. Um, so that that it gives you a little it gives you a little bit of uh, comfort knowing that if I do contract COVID, then I'm not going to die from it. OK, and then if I do contract it, I, it won't be so bad. I, I, you know, I'm not going to destroy everybody in my family. OK, got but, ours, too. <laughs> got y'all. It's wonderful. And so it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a good idea, even if you got uh, vaccinated, to just take for granted that I got vaccinated and don't follow the precautions. Let's still follow precautions. OK, let's still follow precautions. Let's wash our hands. Let's disinfect services that we come in contact with and, and that the public come in contact with. Let's disinfect them regularly. OK, um, if you're sick and got symptoms or anything, stay home. Don't bring it to work. OK, wear layers, wear masks with layers. You know, um, these N95 masks are very, very good masks, N95 masks. They're very good. Multi layers, right? Multi layers and filters and everything on the inside. Very good. Make sure they got a metal clip here to hold tight to the nose so that we don't lose. Don't bring in anything because we form a suction when we put these masks on and we suck in air and we also blow air out where we have leaks. OK, so let's make sure that we're covered up properly. Um, wash your hands about 20 seconds. OK, say do, do the birthday song. Or do the alphabet whenever you wash your hands. If you don't have <laughs> access to soap or water, use hand sanitizer. OK, but wash your hands. All right. Next slide. Twenty-nine to sixty thousand person die each year. They get the flu. Okay. Twenty-nine to sixty thousand 
twenty nine to sixty thousand. How many people we lost in a year? We lost over five hundred thousand people in a year yeah. to COVID nineteen. It's a bunch of people. Okay, both diseases are caused by by a virus. Okay, um, and there's no cure for viruses, right? So don't think because you got a viral infection that you're going to take an antibiotic. Antibiotics don't work for viral infection. Okay, it don't work for that. You have to use an antiviral medication, and some of them still won't touch that virus because viruses mutate and change often. Okay, um, both are both are, are transmitted through respiratory droplets, which means me talking right now is forming droplets, and so people come in contact with that. And they can also be infected. The droplets also fall on surfaces. We pick those, we touch those surfaces, wipe our face or our mucal, uh, mucal membranes, and we get contract, we contract the virus that way as well. Okay. Um, so, what are my symptoms if I got COVID? Um, you can, it both can cause a fever, cough, body aches, fatigue, sometimes vomiting and diarrhea, can be mild or severe, even fatal in rare cases, can result in pneumonia. We see all these same symptoms in people who had COVID. I had COVID back in. Um, March of uh, 2020. Yeah, mm -hmm. the first part of March of 2020. And didn't know, it wasn't a big thing then. Didn't know what it was. I was on a conference in Washington, D.C., rode an Amtrak with a bunch of people, got in a cab with people, you know, people that came with us, and I was sick. I was sick. I had respiratory uh, issues. I had GI upset. I had the fever, the chills, the sweating. I had all of that going on. Luckily, I took one of my providers with me to Washington, and he was able to give me a, give me a prescription for um, steroids and for nasal sprays and Tylenol. And so that kind of kept me going, you know, and I had it heavy for about three or four days, but didn't realize at the time that that's what I had. But did that, my thought process went back to once I found out what was going on, how many people I came into contact with, how much coughing I did on that train, who else did I infect and did they lose their life? So that's why it makes me now to want to cover up more whenever, whenever I'm around people, because I don't know who I affected or infected during that time. And so my heart goes out to them and I, I you know, I'm, to his heart, I hope God, hope God touched them wherever they were. Okay, am I right? Mm -hmm. Okay, stroke can happen to even young men or young women. I got some guys that I graduated, I consider myself fairly young, but I got some guys that graduated with me that years ago, I mean, many years ago, they had a stroke and they were young, young guys. So I know a stroke can happen to anybody. Heart attack can happen to anybody. Okay, so what are the signs and symptoms? Okay, sudden numbness or weakness in the face, arms, legs, especially on one side of the body. Okay, why? Because strokes uh, affects the atmosphere of the brain, one side of the left or right. Okay, so if it's the right side, it's going to affect your left the left side of your body. And it is opposite. Okay, sudden um, confusion, trouble speaking or misunderstanding uh, or, or understanding, sudden trouble seeing in one or, one or both eyes. Trouble walking, distance, loss of balance or coordination, sudden severe headaches with no known cause. OK, call 911 if you have any of these symptoms. OK, so what causes strokes? Strokes are, are cardiovascular, right? You can have a blockage in some of your blood vessels supplying blood to the to the uh, to the brain. You can have an aneurysm, uh, which is a blood clot that bursts inside the blood vessels. It, there's a lot of things that can cause a stroke, but mainly it comes to our overall general health cardiovascular health, what we eat, what we put in our body, smoking, okay, and all those things. So we have to be careful. Increase your exercise, reduce your smoking, um, be, be careful about your diet, and just see your doctors and keep track of your numbers. Next. Diabetes. Diabetes is a silent killer, okay. Um, there's a bunch of people right now in South Carolina that, that's considered pre-diabetic which means you have an A1C of about 6.5, 6.3. Um, you have um, occasional numbers of, of high spiking blood sugars, okay? Um, in order for those things to go away, you need to change your diet, exercise, change your lifestyle. But in case you are having, just in case you're wondering if you fit into this category, category, this is some of your common symptoms, okay? Increased thirst, okay? And I should, they should say this, increased thirst without activity, okay? Which means if I'm just sitting there and I ain't doing nothing, and all of a sudden I'm just getting thirsty, I can't get enough to drink, I'm just drink, constantly drinking, constantly drinking, then you need to get checked, okay? Increase hunger. If I'm if I'm eating, and then I'm, as, soon, as soon as I finish eating, I'm still hungry, that's a symptom, okay? Dry mouth. So how does increased thirst and dry mouth go together? Because if my mouth is dry, I'm still wanting water. I'm still needing water, okay? So what's going to happen with all that water that I take in? I'm going to urinate. So increase urination, okay? Um, unexplained weight loss. Even though I'm eating a lot and I feel, and, and feel hungry, okay. Fatigue, blurred vision, headaches, 
loss of consciousness, which, which is rare, but it does happen. Uh, get the regular checkups to make sure that you're free, um, that your blood sugar is where it's supposed to be, and would do within range with your A1C, which is a, a 90 day, which is a 90 day average of your blood sugar. That's what A1C is, okay? It's a 90 day average of your blood sugar. Okay, am I right? All right. Mental health. How is your brain doing? Men internalize everything. We won't talk to people when we go into something, we hold it in. You know, we let we just explode on certain people every now and then, but we just keep that stuff in because it, we was told as men, like you said earlier, Brother Daniel, that men don't cry. You know, suck mm -hmm. it up. Be a man, man up. Okay. Which means I can't tell nobody that I'm having issues because then it makes me look weak. Okay. But real mental health and real men don't mind sharing problems because they understand I got a bigger load than the one that I'm carrying, right? I got a load that I'm taking care of that I need to be there for. Mental health can cause us to call cause us to have depression, which can lead to anxiety, um, isolation. Which can lead to suicide. Okay, so we need to talk more. What is mental health? It's how we think, how we feel, and how we behave. Okay, what are the signs of fatigue? A lot of men go to depression. So what are those signs? Back up just for a minute, my right, because this is a big issue with a lot of men now, especially during the COVID issue. Depression. Okay, men, a lot of guys been put out of work. They can't find work. Okay, their families are home. They have to babysit. They they lose their function as, as breadwinners, and they become stay at home dads and they lose their sense of purpose. So fatigue, um, sleeping too much or too little, uh, feeling bad, physically chronic stomach ache or back ache, irritability, frustration, a hopeless feeling, difficulty concentrating, anger, hostility, feeling stress, anxiety, substance abuse, sexual dysfunction, and indecision. Okay. Those are things that we face as men when we go through depression. Okay. And uh, I, I want to I'll add this and see how y'all feel about it because, you know, like you say, from a culture standpoint and in our community, we've always been taught, like, if you go see a counselor, people are going to think you're crazy. Yes. And, you know, and again, especially us as men, we're never told to, you know, even if we express our emotions, our feelings, like you said, we look at as soft or you're crazy or you know, that's not the manly thing to do. And a lot of times we may go years and years with something balled up inside of us. And when it actually comes out, it's not going to come out right. 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 And, you know, when we deal with, you know, our health issues, and like I say, we don't talk about them. We don't talk about our mental issues. And when those two combinations go together, it, it, it's, there's there's hardly room to bounce back from it right. and we got to get past this stereotype you know and let men know it's okay to ask for help it's okay right. to talk to someone you know whether or not it's a professional but find someone that is going to give you not the the thought or the opinion that you want you don't need a yes person or um maybe a family member you know, that's going to just tell you it's okay. No, we need to we need to explore deeper the reason why this is going on and how to manage your emotions while things are going on with you. That's right. Um, and especially even our young kids, you know, growing up and they're seeing violent situations and things of that nature. Nobody talks about the trauma of what you saw, you know, when we grew up. If there was a shooting that happened outside, our parents just kept us in the house for two weeks. Till, till it kind of died off and mm -hmm. you might go outside, but you got to stay in the yard. Yep. Well, if I heard, you know, that was my friend that got killed. Now I'm not able to express myself to talk about the loss of my friend. And here it is. I might not feel safe about going outside anymore. Now all of a sudden I want to stay in and I cut myself off from other, the other people. Yeah. I, Kids are doing that, and if they're doing it as kids, they handle it the same way when they become adults. That's right. So we have to, you know, still push this message out to our men, but even in our families, it's okay to seek help. It's okay to talk about it. Um, 
And yes, you know, some things are covered under insurance. That's right. That's right. So, you know, going back to your point earlier about being employed, having insurance to be able to go to doctors and stuff like that. It's the same thing when we're dealing with our mental health, being able to talk to someone, letting our kids go to counselors at school and, right. and, and not worrying about how that's going to look versus your child exploding later doing something that he shouldn't be doing, but it, it came from not handling the issue mentally. So either we might end up handling in the hospital, in jail, or might be putting our kids and our loved ones in the ground if we don't deal with it. That's right. That's right. That's right. Am I right? Why shouldn't why should we use the emergency room for general health care? Because first of all, like you just said, we don't have jobs. A lot of guys don't have jobs. They don't have insurance. And the emergency room is very, very expensive. It's time consuming. A lot of times when you go in there, you could, you are, you are, you're automatically um, um, setting yourself up to be able to pick up something from somebody sitting in the lobby or, you know, being exposed to something that you shouldn't be exposed to. And so um, and you, you never develop a relationship with an uh, emergency room doctor because they rotate in and out. So that's not your primary care provider. Um, also, um, the need for health maintenance that ER facilities cannot provide. You can't go to them on a regular basis for a checkup. So you need to establish a relationship with the primary care provider that you can go and see and have your needs met and your history and your, uh, your numbers followed correctly. Okay. Next. Marek. Okay, what are some what are some places where I can go for general health care? Okay, free clinics. Okay, I think Donaldson County has a free clinic. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure about Marlboro mm -hmm. County, but, but but in Marlboro County we do have Care South Carolina that uses a sliding scale. Um, and in Donaldson County we have uh, uh, clinics over in Donaldson County as well. Care South Carolina uh, where you do sliding scales um, and the cost of care is based on your percentage of your income. Okay, a doctor's care, urgent care, um, but do not use an emergency room. Try to find one of these places. Um, so if you have health insurance and able to uh, do self-pay, find a doctor in network for your medic for your medical home. Find you a medical home, and that's what Care South. That's what we at Care South call ourselves a medical home. All your needs are met under one roof. Everything that you need from your from your mental to your physical health, okay, to your community needs is met met through Care South Carolina, okay. Emergency health care. What are some symptoms that I might need to go to the emergency room for? Okay. If you pass out, you ain't going to go. Somebody going to call for you, so you're going to have to go. Okay. Chest pain. We talked about that before. Any chest pain issues, go see a doctor. Any shortness of breath, go to the emergency room. Okay. These are only for severe cases. Okay. Um, a high fever uh, accompanied with a stiff neck, mental confusion, or difficulty breathing, coughing up blood or vomiting blood. Um, a cut or wound that won't stop bleeding and possible broken bones or if you have a thought to commit suicide, go to the emergency room. That's an emergency issue as well. And believe it or not, if you make that statement to somebody and that person believe in their heart that, you, that you're that you going to do it, that person should call 911, okay? Yep. And the police department and have you taken to the emergency room for evaluation and treatment, okay? Suicide is real and suicide has increased since COVID-19, especially among um, our young people Okay, and a young and, and amongst African Americans as well. Okay. Men, how to be healthy. Change some of your basic attitudes and behavior about health. Okay, make your health your priority. Okay. Um, there's a statement through um to uh Project Lazarus, which is out of Wilmington, North Carolina, that says every community is responsible for its own health. OK, so it means in order for every community, every person in that community need to be responsible for their own health and make their health a priority. If you are healthy and your, the people in your community are healthy, you will have a healthy community and a healthy future for the upcoming citizens of that community. OK, you will start a lifestyle that they have to follow. OK, seek health care early. 
if you have a problem. Okay, go ahead, brother. No, I was I was gonna just add to the, the point that you know form little groups that you can participate with. You know, a lot of times we may not have a gym available, but you might start a little walking group or you know, so just find somebody to be an accountability partner. That's right. That's right. But you have to make you have to make sure that you make your health your priority. There's there's mm -hmm. nobody's responsibility about your health but you. You are responsible for your own health. Okay. Uh, we can make suggestions. We can give you information like we're doing today. But you would have to take this this information and apply it in order for it to be successful. In order for it to work. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. It's important for all men, healthy or not, to get a regular physical by a healthcare provider. Seek mental health providers if needed. Okay. And try to use a regular healthcare provider for your healthcare needs to build a relationship and history. Don't use the ER. Immunizations, get your flu shot yearly. Okay. Get your tetanus shot every 10 years. Or if you had an injury within within five years of that injury. Okay. Um, shingle shot. If you had chicken pox as a child, then get the shingle shot because you're more likely to you, you're more predisposed predisposed uh predis predisposed of getting shingles because of your uh, having uh, chicken pox. Okay. Um Studies have shown that poor dental hygiene and oral care have a link with such things as digestive problems, oral cancer, heart disease. Okay, you know, I told you, without good dental health, you can't have no good physical health because if you can't get it down there properly, then you can't get the proper nourishment that you need. Okay, uh, check with your local dentist or tech school about possible dental programs where you can get free cleanings and free screenings on your teeth. Okay, um, dad connection. Okay. Be a role model. Show your children by example of how to be healthy and take care of your body. Genetics, a lot of us are, have predispositions for many diseases, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, and many concerns are linked to our families. Okay. So when somebody when the doctor says, Well, you have you are predisposed to having this because your mother, your grandfather, your sister, your brother got it, that means that you have a genetic history of these diseases. And you're more likely to get that. Okay. So you have to work extremely hard not to. Change your eating habits and have healthy eating, eating habits, okay? Exercise more. Like I said, if you can't do it on your own, find an accountability partner and y'all do it together. Push each other. Have more outside exercises or inside exercises. doesn't matter as long as you're moving, okay? Motion is lotion. Motion is good for health, okay? Taking care of your health, okay, by doing checkups and dental care and mental health screenings if you need to, okay? And once again, make health a priority in your life, Okay. My record, is that, do, do we wrap it up? Do we have anything else? I think so. Fatherhood, DNA paternity test, okay? How can you establish legal paternity? I always tell people, be responsible for your own, be responsible for your own, for your own responsibility, okay? Make sure you're taking care of what's yours, okay? And make sure that you are taking care of what's yours. So get a DNA test, mm -hmm. okay? Go and get checked. Make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do for your child. Okay. Um, paternity testing looks um, at 16 of the human 46 chromosomes to match to make sure that the father is the, the father is is the paternity the uh, paternal parent for that child. Okay. If there are any questions um, about close relations like brothers or extensive tests can be done for three hundred dollars more. Uh, that looks at all 46. Okay. Remember, the first paternity test only look at 16. But if you ain't sure, if you got a cousin that look just like you, then you might want to go and get the plan three hundred get the whole 46. Okay? Make sure. Oh. Okay? <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay? Your greatest wealth uh, is your health. Okay? People talk about wealth being money, but I don't care how much money I got. I can't buy health. Okay? But I can work now and put uh, and, and invest in my health and make it invaluable. Okay? So that, that'll give me value and increase my wealth. OK, so greatest health, greatest wealth is your health because you can't make money if you can't get out the house to earn money. Right. All right. And brother, that wraps it up. I hope I cover about everything that you need me to cover. Um, and, and I really enjoy this part because we need to get more of this out. I wish we can do some mm -hmm. some uh, outreach, go in the streets and just randomly question guys about what you're doing about your health. And let, I'd be I'd be curious to see what some people say about it. Um, I got a lot of different answers mm -hmm. about the COVID vaccine, um, about, you know, how it changes your DNA uh, and makes you sterile and all these myths about COVID-19 <laughs> taking the vaccine 
And I, I feel like people, is before you make a decision about anything, make sure you make an educated and informed decision by seeking um, good resources for information that you are, that you are putting out there. Don't don't be don't don't go to Google all the time. Google kill you. I tell people you go to Lord knows I got a I got a, I got a green spot on my finger there. Google tell you that you got finger cancer and that your hair gonna rot off next week and then by three days later you gonna die. Okay, leave Google alone. Go talk to somebody that's got a you got a heartbeat. You take a little bit of time and all you can take. <laughs> and destroy your liver and your kidneys. You didn't have a problem to begin with, but now Google made you destroy your liver. Okay, and your kidneys. So yeah. <laughs> Stay away from Google, okay? Go and see somebody, develop a relationship, like they said, and develop a history uh, so you'll know what's going on with your numbers and going on with your body. All right, guys, you got any questions? Uh, anything you want to say? Um, just me on a final note, I just want to encourage all the men out there, uh, seek mental health. You know, that's a, that's a big issue in our community. Um, we need to do more of it. We need to do more talking, getting things off the chest because we don't want it to be an episode later that we can't recover from. Exactly. Exactly. And just to be transparent, brother, you know, I'm, uh, I'm prior military and I do have I, I've been diagnosed with PTSD, but I make sure mm -hmm. that I talk to somebody. And so instead of that bottle being always pressurized, there's always a relief factor whenever you talk to somebody. So you're not over. You know what I'm saying? You're not building up that, that stuff that usually build up. And I find yep. that my life is a whole lot better since I can talk about some of the things that's been bothering me. Same here. I, I will add real quick that, of course, uh, we, we we represent two outstanding uh, organizations, uh, Care South Cares, Man to Man Fatherhood Cares. For all of those who are viewing and listening, Listen, reach out to us. Um, we are we, we are recruiting every day. <laughs> reach out to us for for information and, and more tips on how to uh, learn some uh, uh, healthy health practices, some healthy uh, eating practices. Uh, it's never too late to start eating right. It's never too late to start exercising, you know, small small little goals of you know 15 minutes 30 minutes what have you but at the same time to invest in a better you is more than worth it it's more than worth it so You're right just to mention mm -hmm. that up and contact information is there uh reach out to us well whether it's in florence whether it's in darlington whether it's in uh marlboro county or dillon county uh reach out to us um We'd love to talk with you more about ideas on getting help for mental health, um, healthy living, healthy eating um, th throughout this whole and, and for this this whole uh, next uh, five weeks. We're going to be uh, discussing more into uh, our men's health and other things like that. So we have much more information to offer. So uh, look forward for, look forward for you guys tuning in. Hey, that's right. So I thank you guys for giving us the opportunity to catch out to be a part of this. And we look forward to the next time that we can get together and do this again, really. Yes, sir. Absolutely, my brother. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. All right.